one of the big challenges that we face is to reduce our dependence on imported oil and we would like to electrify our transportation sector, our vehicles. One of the goals of the Department of Energy is to do that through turning our transportation fleet, running it on batteries if we could, our electric vehicles. One of the challenges there is that our batteries really don't perform well enough, cannot run a car long enough or fast enough for what we truly need for the customers to be happy. In order to achieve this goal, we need to develop high capacity batteries, including lithium ion batteries. The current anode material used in lithium ion battery is carbon based material. So, ideally, we would like to at least double the capacity of the anode materials. Tin oxide is a high capacity anode material. However, the stability of the material is very poor. As you charge discharge the battery, the capacity fades very fast and capacity comes down very quickly. And that is the problem with these real high capacity anode materials like tin or silicon, which is kind of the holy grail, is we know they have tremendous capacity they have terrible cycle life and that on repeating charge and discharge they will always tear themselves apart essentially tear the structure apart so in this particular paper we're trying to resolve that problem by combining tin oxide with other high conductive materials so in this case the graphite is separated into single molecular sheets our collaboration with Pacific Northwest National Laboratory started out with our invention on the production of uh, functionalized graphene. So I'd like to explain what this functionalized graphene is. Unlike the uh, graphene that's peeled off from graphite by using scotch tape, what we do is something that dates back to 1859, where uh, a British chemist, Brody, oxidize graphite in strong acids. We split this graphite oxide to more than 80% single sheet functionalized graphene oxide. We do that by thermally exfoliating it. Then we mix graphene and tin oxide in a very special way so that the surface chemistry of the graphene is modified by surfactant to match the chemistry of tin oxide Surfactants are commonly used materials. We would think of them more as detergents or soaps. So in the case of detergents that we use in laundry soaps or hand soaps, dirt for the most part, or organics or oils, are not miscible in water. Just like oil and water in a salad dressing, they do not mix. So a surfactant molecule actually has on one end, part of the molecule would like to be in water, the other end it is hydrophobic or does not like water. And so what it has the ability to do is surround, for example, an oil particle and bury the tail, as we call it, or the hydrophobic portion in the oil where it wants to be, but then it leaves the outer portion of the molecule that likes water so that then you can come in and put in a water-based solution that then you can precipitate the tin oxide or the silica or the phases that are the active materials for the battery. When you mix this molecular precursors, you stir them in a solution to self-assemble into highly ordered materials in which the tin oxide is sandwiched between graphene seeds. So we perform very careful transmission electron microscopy study of this material to reveal what kind of microstructures we have. At no magnification, you can clearly see the layer structure uh, with dark and the white bands. So the dark bands are the tin oxide and the white bands are the graphene materials. If you go to high resolution transmission electron microscopy, you can begin to see the atomic planes of the tin oxide and the atomic planes of the graphene material. So in this particular case, we can clearly see how the crystalline tin oxide nanoparticles are sandwiched between four or so layers of graphene sheets. Now, this new material has very special properties. The graphene seeds function as a good conducting material to connect the electrons in the battery. At the same time, when you charge discharge the electrode material, the tin oxide will expand and shrink. However, because 
they are sandwiched between the graphene sheets. The whole material doesn't fall apart. Therefore, you retain the good stability of the electrode material. And the reason this work is important is that it's a possible route to improving the battery performance so that it might be able to meet the goals that the Department of Energy has established for vehicles. And it is an approach that, though thought about in a number of ways, it's been very difficult to do in an easy synthesis route that can produce a lot of material at a low cost, potentially. And I think that's why many people look at this as perhaps this kind of an approach may be able to solve some of these big hurdles that we've faced for many years.